So what we're going to be looking at is, I know last time um, on our notes that we drew, do you remember those notes that we drew? I made you, uh, because we had issues with the homework, I made you draw this, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back one more time because you really have to be well versed in this stuff to be able to understand what is going on. So what we are looking at here is just some notes on monetary policy. Again, we know monetary policy is done by our central bank called the Fed, which we watched in plain English last time. And we see their whole goal is to promote price stability and full employment and basically how our economy to grow. And so we talked about like, it used to be before the Great Depression that our highs were really high and our lows were really low. And so we can look at the business cycle and it would go like this, but by the time we get to the Great Depression, John Maynard Keynes is going to come in and says the government can come and prime the pump and we're going to see our fluctuations will be less in the business cycle. And a lot of this stems from the creation of monetary policy and also fiscal policy, which we'll be getting into in our next unit. And so we're going to see there's always two problems, which eventually we'll see in the 70s, there's three problems that we deal with. Either we're always dealing with our problem one is inflation, right? And when we have inflation, what phase of the business cycle is that? Expansion. This is an expansion. My other problem is what? Unemployment. And when I have unemployment, what phase of the business cycle am I in? Contraction. Contraction. Okay. Okay. So our problems, problem one, which is that unemployment, we are going to use expansionary. I call it easy because we're easing up the money. The government will buy bonds, decrease the discount rate, and decrease the reserve requirement. They go in the same direction, right? Decrease, decrease. I always think you're going down that hill. Okay. Inflation, which is in an expansion, they use contractionary or tight. They tighten up the money supply and they'll sell. Um, increase the discount rate and increase the reserve requirement. So I always remember with problem two, inflation, I always remember International Sports Illustrated. Increase the reserve requirement, sell those bonds, and increase that discount rate. On a contraction where we're using that expansionary, I always remember down, boy, down. Decrease the reserve requirement, buy those bonds, and decrease that discount rate. Y'all get my little weird damn boy down international sports illustrated y'all get that all right so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the impact of these policies and i know this camera is, is that better now okay so our first one is a recession right high unemployment what is that percentage over unemployment that i don't want to see it go over all right we're going to say five to six <coughs> This is when we know that we are in a recession, okay? So our goal, first off, what has happened to <coughs> aggregate demand if we're in a recession? Has aggregate demand gone up or gone down? Down. Yeah. Down, so what, what is our goal for aggregate demand? Up. To increase it. So our policy we're gonna do is we need to get more money out there, right? If there's more money in your pocket, will your aggregate demand go up? And so our policy, we're going to call it expansionary, I call it easy, money policy. I didn't have enough room there, sorry. So our tools, remember I said in a recession, down, boy, down. So that discount rate is going to go which way? Down. We're going to buy bonds and we're going to reduce the reserve requirement, down, boy, down, right? Do y'all get that? All right, so now, if the reserve requirement is lowered, that means that they have to hold less in reserves, so what happens to excess reserves? It goes up. So if excess reserve goes up, what happens to my money supply? It goes up. So which way does my, if I look at my graph right here that I drew last time, my money supply shifts to the right, right? So then what happens to that interest rate? It goes down. It goes down. Does that encourage people to borrow? Yes. Yes, because now it is cheaper to borrow. Okay. So then over here, 
I said one of my tools was to buy bonds. When the, yes? What does it say right about the uh, discount rate? Discount rate. I, I, it's just that I should have done this. I couldn't fit it on a page, so I, this landscape fit it, but it was not the most, I should have used the back of a page. <laughs> I was just trying to fit it on one side to look aesthetically pleasing. <coughs> Aesthetics. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. So now that it's cheaper to get loans, are people going to get loans? Yes. Does that increase the money supply? Yes. And that's the whole goal. If we increase the money supply, do we increase aggregate demand? Yes. Right. So the next thing is we're going to look at bond prices. Let's just say all of you have bonds in your hands. And the government says they're going to buy them back from you. Are you going to sell them to the government at a low price or a high price? High price. High price. So this bond price must be high. If the government says they're going to give you a good percentage, are you going to give them back that piece of paper? Yeah. Yes. And what does the government give you in your hands? Money. money. Does that increase our money supply? Yes. If the money supply increases, does that increase our aggregate demand? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the whole goal is increase the money supply. So what we're going to see is the real interest rate is going to go down. Right? Do y'all remember what C plus I plus G plus C XN? Do y'all remember what C is? Consumers. Consumers. What is I? Interest. Nominal. Investment. So if I've now made, if I, which we just talked about, the money supply has increased and now the interest rate has gone down, right? What is going to happen to the consumption of the consumer and the investment business? Is, go it's going to go up. I know this is foreign exchange and this is unit six for me. Okay. I'm going to tell you that when people consume more at home, what happens to our foreign exchange? Damn. So, this one is also going to go down. What is dot? What is dot? What? It's literally just a dot. Oh, it's E. Oh, it's E. Oh, okay. Sorry, dot. It, it's no, e. I, I was like, I was like, there's just a dot sitting up there. It, it's E. I was like, I thought you were talking about these dots. Because this is all my stuff in foreign exchange. I was like, yes, there's a lot of dots. Okay. That was crazy. Well, and I didn't know what, I was like, there's a lot of dots, but this is E. Okay, it was just, my E needs to be bigger. I just couldn't put a big E because I need something else. Okay, so this will go down. Our, this is, do y'all remember what XN net, is? Net, 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 net exports. So we know that it's actually going to go up because we have more money, we can buy more goods. Aggregate demand, what have I been saying? If we put more money in the supply, aggregate demand should go which way? Uh, up. So now people have money. What's going to happen to our price level? People have money. It's going to go up. Did you see how it was in a contraction, but all of these, what did these policies do to that contraction? Did it keep us going in a contraction? Yeah. It pulled us up into what now? An expansion, all right? Um, this is inflation right here. What's gonna happen to inflation now? It's gonna go up. Unemployment. All of this is unit six. I'm gonna save it for there. That's unit six, okay? How do y'all feel? Okay. Are y'all getting an understanding of what's happening? Let's look at it now over here. Inflation, inflation has to be over what percent? Three percent. I know that I have too many dollars chasing too few goods. So, People have a lot of money, right? So what has happened to aggregate demand? It's gone what? Up. So do I want aggregate demand to go up any higher? So what's my goal for aggregate demand? Bring it down. So my policy is contractionary because I want to contract the economy, right? I don't want to keep it going up. So I call it contractionary, you could call it tight. We want to tighten up the money. So I tell myself, International Sports Illustrated, what am I going to do with that discount rate? Increase it. I'm going to sell bonds.
And what am I going to do with that reserve requirement? I'm going to make it go up. All right, so now what has happened to the amount of money we have in the supply? It shrunk, so my reserve requirement is higher, so what's happening to excess reserves? And so my money supply will go down. So which way does that shift my money supply? If I go back here, my money supply now shifts to the left. And so what happens to that interest rate? It goes up. Bond prices. Do they want to, because if it's high, the government's going to be giving people money. Does the government want to give people money? Oh, no. no, they want to shrink the amount of money out no. there. So what happens to the price of bond prices? They go yeah. down. Okay. okay. The interest rate. It goes up, right? Mm -hmm. Don't I have that right here showing you that interest rate goes up? Mm -hmm. Because do we want people taking out those loans? No, we want to make it more expensive. So now, what is going to happen to consumer and investment spending? It goes down because it's expensive to buy. Foreign exchange, which again, I told you I'm going to do this in unit six, goes up. E goes up as well. It is, and that's what I want you to see with this. This is why this chart was created. So then, net exports goes down. Aggregate demand goes. Price level, real GDP. Because now I've used these tools to tighten up the money supply, right? And so our economy now comes into what? A contraction. And everything goes down and this will go up. Unemployment. So using these tools, does it cause the next problem? Yeah. And then I'm in that next problem and it's going to cause the next phase of the business cycle. So do you see how it's cyclical? It's just controlling how extreme it is. Yes. And that's why, if I look back up here, before the Great Depression, our highs were really high and they were really low. And now after that, we're going to see this cycle. It's not going to be as high because the government's going to come in with these tools. How do y'all feel now? Y'all see that we've been charting this out all week and now we have something looking at it. Okay. So, so essentially, it's, and I know you never use this word in economics, but it's, impossible for our economy to completely collapse. Yes, that's entirely true. It, it's we, We're just going to get lower lows